So our next finalist, uh, who we're going to be awed and inspired by, comes to us from Plano, Texas. Let's give a warm welcome to Rithvik. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. All right, that's yours. Have fun, enjoy. My name is Rithvik Ganesh, and my project is Remembering Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia, which is a general term for memory loss and cognitive dysfunction that affects patients. It's a progressive disease, meaning it worsens over time and affects over five million Americans. My project dealt with how specific plant components can be used to treat this deadly disease. Although the exact suspects of Alzheimer's disease are still unknown, the prime suspects are called plaques and tangles. Plaque and tangle buildup in the brain can significantly disrupt the brain's normal function. The approach of my project was to find a compound that can bind to these plaques and tangles and disrupt their toxic function, slowing the further onset of Alzheimer's in patients. I spent several years researching how plants could be used to treat this deadly disease. To do so, I selected two plants from literature that were known for helping Alzheimer's patients in the past. From these plants, I selected two active compounds. From these active compounds, I made a total of 500 small molecular changes, which I determined as my test set. As you can see here, the green and purple represent changes from the structure above. So I divided my research framework into four parts, phase one, phase two, phase three, and lead molecule declaration. In phase one, I performed an industry standard technique called molecular docking, which can be used to predict the binding energies of two known 3D structures. In this case, I wanted the binding energy between the plaques and tangles and the compound I generated to be as high as possible. As you can see here, we generate this binding energy by trying multiple poses of the red compound and complex with the white target, which in this case would be the plaques and tangles. However, this process can be very labor intensive and time consuming. To ex expedite this process, with the help of my mentor, I gained access to the 3M high performance compute farm, in which I was able to develop self-written automation tools to scale up my project significantly. I was able to test 4,500 compounds in a significant reduction in time, from months to hours. 34 compounds with good binding energy out of the original 500 advanced to phase two. In phase two, I screened for various drug likeliness properties, or rules or metrics for defining drug-like compounds. In this case, I tested these 34 compounds against five rules, as well as assessed solubility and a feasibility score for synthesis of these compounds, or how easy it is to make these compounds in real life which is critical for future development. Eight compounds out of the 34 originally were found with good drug likeliness properties. As you can see here, out of the eight compounds, only one compound, as highlighted, was found with undesirable properties. The other seven advanced to phase four, which was a lead molecule declaration phase. In phase four, based on all the previous binding energy results I had gained, I was able to determine one lead molecule with good binding energy to the three selected targets targets. It has good binding energies to the toxic plaques and tangles that are characteristic in Alzheimer's patients. Now that the current phase of this study, in silico computational studies, was complete, looking forward, I want to perform in vitro and in vivo studies. In vitro studies is lab-like testing on real organisms. In vivo studies will be animal models and human models. With the help of my 3M mentor, I was able to assess how 3M drug delivery systems could be implemented. One approach that seemed particularly promising was a transdermal patch, which is an alternative way of administering a drug to the patient through the skin. It's particularly beneficial for Alzheimer's patients as they don't have to remember to take pills. Additionally, it minimizes side effects, which is a common problem in existing medications. Again, with the help of a 3M drug delivery expert, I was able to create a 3M empirical model, and as you can see here, the compounds that which I identified, the green and yellow, fall into the feasible region and are reasonable candidates for transdermal delivery. I'm so honored to have worked with my 3M mentor and so many 3M subject experts over the summer. My research findings were published in a peer-reviewed international medical journal. I'd like to thank Discovery Education and 3M for this incredible opportunity. My mentor, Mr. Reese, all the 3M subject experts that helped me along the way, as well as my school, Rice Middle School, for the amazing science teachers and staff for their support. Thank you. Uh, 
a great presentation, by the way. So I'd like to ask you a few uh, question about how your future plans. So what other factors could potentially impact how your plant compound can, uh, I guess, uh, disrupt Al Alzheimer's pathways? And was this uh, factored into the program? And how would you factor this in potentially? Right, so looking forward, the in vitro studies, which is what's after the computational, will be direct lab-like testing on real organisms. So what I need to do is figure out how to make these compounds in real life. So with the help of my 3M mentor, I was able to contact a 3M medicinal chemist in which we were able to develop the exact sequence which you can create the compound which I identified. So that's how I'm doing future development. First off, that was a wonderful presentation and it looks like a project that has a lot of value to the world. So I want to take it back to the very beginning and ask what initially inspired or led you to focus on plants as a source for this? What was the, and, and specifically the two plants that you chose? Right, so how that started was originally how I saw the amazing effects plants had had on patients in the past. You always see these clinical studies saying, oh, this plant can help slow, stop, or even reverse Alzheimer's. So I thought, why not start there? Why not start at something that works and modify it so that it can help attack the disease better? So that's how I selected the two plants, which were cinnamon and the common sage. Thank you. Awesome job. Um, clearly a lot of work and a lot more work to do going forward. Um, I guess one of the questions I have is that you've in a sense screened already uh, hundreds of, of potential candidates. Um, as you had mentioned, there's been work done in this area previously. Did you take some time to explore both the scientific literature as well as the patent literature to see if these compounds have been explored previously? Sure, yes. So how I did about that was I researched the exact chemical name and saw how they were studied in before. And all of these compounds are new, especially the top compound I identified is a novel compound, novel plant-based compound, which I plan to take for future development. Thank you, Ganesh. The thing is, you said that your work has been published in a peer-reviewed journal. Right. Have you followed the citations so far? Who else has cited your work? So it just got recently published, actually. It got published like last month, so I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because the motivation for the question is kind of be serious, um, interesting, because really the chemical transformation, that's, that's a molecule that's easy to synthesize. Right. And how soon can they actually start doing some nanobot testing? So. Right. With the congratulations, really, what fine work you've done. Did you have any kind of personal experience with anyone that you know in your family or friends that have experienced Alzheimer's as a motivation for what you're doing? Not directly Alzheimer's, but dementia. And you always hear people saying that this is like a family disease. It's something that's affecting everyone. So I thought, why is it so hard to do it? And that's where I got into this and kind of just started researching a little bit. Thank you. So um, I love the I love the project. It's great and the presentation. Um, and and it, and I really appreciate how much credit you give to your mentors and to your other people you got to work with. Besides the scientific help, wh what did what did you take away from working with these experts? So I've been able to gain access to so many scientists that are really really experts in their field, and just gaining those insights and seeing how science can connect everywhere. That's really expanded what I've been doing and helped me thorough my research a lot. So uh, I, I think you noted in an early slide that currently 5 million um, afflicted in the US with Alzheimer's. That number could jump to 16 million in 2050. Based on typical the research you've done on typical Alzheimer's uh, treatments, any idea, you, it sounds like you know what next steps would be in your process. All right. What's the timeline that would be likely for uh, moving this forward? Right, so in vitro studies, I'm actually planning to do that in the coming winter. All I need to do is order this compound and use that same synthetic process I uh, learned from the 3M medicinal chemist to make the compounds in real life. 
As far as animal testing, I need to contact um, some, okay. All right, thank you. Great job, how are you feeling? Great. Good? Thank you. Good. All right, thank you so much. Another round of applause.